article just broke on Infowars.com. It has not made national news yet. It is now going to make national news. It's from KRGV News on the border here in Texas. It is confirmed. We'll play the newscast at the bottom of the hour after our guest leaves us. In the event of emergency, hold on to your hats for this one, but it's par for the course. Illegals to be evacuated before citizens. Should a hurricane or other life-threatening catastrophic weather event impact South Texas, illegal aliens occupying various shelters will be first in line to get to safer ground, close quote. A National Weather Service coordinator says, this is at a meeting this week with emergency managers in the Rio Grande Valley region where even small towns have spent millions in the last year taking care of the giant influx. They address the reality that in addition to picking up the tab for putting the immigrants up, they also are accepting responsibility for their safety. That's taxation without representation. Why doesn't Obama pay for it? Or I guess uh, you've got MSNBC hosts saying you're racist if you don't want totally open borders. And you're racist if you don't like Obamacare either. Again, it's this moral high ground garbage. It's social engineering. It's globalism. It's game over. I, a lot of libertarians say, hey, like, like Jesse Ventura, and I'm getting him on in a few weeks. God love him. He's like, I like Mexico. Uh, I think we ought to have an open border. We ought to have freedom. Libertarian. I'm not afraid of danger. I don't want any checkpoints at the airport, which I agree with no checkpoints at the airport. You know, don't give in to fear, Alex. It's that. It's not that. It's that they come here and get on welfare. Well, I like brown people, Alex. Yes, I know. I don't dislike them either, Jesse. But they get put on welfare and become political fodder of the Democrats. I mean, it's just like Jesse's real smart in ways and other ways he just doesn't get it. And and people say, if Avon Turo's on his own TV show, you know, saying this stuff, look, I get it. He's a good he he is a real libertarian, folks. He just says total freedom. But you can't do that when you border a collapsing authoritarian string of kleptocracies. <sighs> but it makes me admire Jesse even more that he's so real. I mean, he he really believes in freedom. He just like other libertarians I know, he just doesn't get it. By the way, we have an iconic libertarian. A lot of his books have been turned into films. Ron Paul is in his new film. And, of course, uh, Kevin uh, Sorbo, Hercules, was on a few weeks ago with us. He's uh, in it as well. Uh, and uh, I'm very excited to have him on. Again, he's the author of 10 books, including three novels. He's the writer, producer, director of the new pro-libertarian near-future suspense filler thriller film, alongside Knight, which he adapted from his 1979 novel of the same name that really mirrors what we're starting to see happen. The novel was endorsed by Nobel laureate Milton Friedman, a Clockwork Orange author, Anthony Burgess, and Dr. Ron Paul, as well as having received rave reviews in magazines and newspapers, including Reason and the Los Angeles Times Book Review, alongside nightmovie.com. And again, I have no stake in the film. I'll probably sell it when it comes out on DVD along with God is Not Dead and other great films that are really successful now. The reason I promote these is because just like I had, uh, I, you know, I had no stake in America, but they're trying to put him in prison for making it, Dinesh D'Souza, so I have a stake in the First Amendment period. They were trying to lock somebody up for a film that I disagreed with. I would probably have them on. Uh, but I you know, really think this book is excellent. Finally got a chance to read it and finish it. Can't wait to see the film. They've sent me a raw copy of it, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it yet. I will probably tonight or tomorrow. Neil, thank you so much for coming on, and I'm sorry we uh, rescheduled you a few weeks ago. Uh, well, I understand, Alex, uh, breaking news has to take precedence. It is such a pleasure to be on with you. I am one of your subscribers. Well, thank you, brother. Well, it's great to have you here. Tell folks that don't know about the book, uh, why it resonates with folks like Ron Paul and the author of Clockwork Orange and others uh, that have been warning of dystopias. Well, Alex, uh, not to um, uh, put too fine a, po a point on it and, uh, and, and proudly to uh, express the egoism that Ayn Rand would approve of, but when it comes to uh, portraying the collapse of the United States uh, due to statism, there's basically uh, two stories. There's Atlas Shrugged and there's Alongside Night. Now, I had an advantage that Ayn Rand didn't have. Uh, she wasn't able to read along. Uh, she wasn't able to read Alongside Night before she wrote Atlas Shrugged, but I was able to read Atlas Shrugged before I wrote Alongside Night. 
people that read the book are blown away by many of the parallels that have come true. Break down the, the you know, basic uh, plot of the book for folks without giving away too much. I took historical examples such as Weimar Germany in 1923 before, um, uh, which created the seeds after World War I uh, for German dissatisfaction and oppression, uh, which led to Ad Adolf Hitler having the, uh, the opportunity to take over. I used historical precedents like that, and like Sinclair Lewis did in It Can't Happen Here, I applied it to uh, the near future United States. And what I came up with was a United States uh, collapsing from government over, uh, overspending, uh, uh, spending us into oblivion, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, uh, because the ta the, there's no point on uh, our Art Laffer's curve uh, for taxes to be able to support the government anymore. So uh, the debt is monetized by the Federal Reserve. Uh, debt is transferred uh, uh, to overseas uh, uh, borrowers uh, because they use the, the dollar as their reserve currency. Um, and essentially what happens is uh, it, it reaches a crisis point where the government doesn't have uh, the ability to pay the army any, anymore. In the meanwhile, uh, I have a character, uh, uh, Dr. Martin Vreeland, the character played by Kevin Sorbo, uh, who has uh, convinced the European Common Market Treaty Organization, remember in the novel, I, I wrote this before there was a European Union or a Euro. He convinces them to go on a gold-backed euro franc and a free market economy so while the united states is in collapse europe is in recovery and he is the key player as to whether or not uh, uh he is appointed treasury secretary so the U european finance ministers will lend enough gold to the united states to float a new hard currency to be able to uh, pay the army again uh however uh the director in the novel of the FBI and updated in the movie to the director of FEMA uh, have, have their own agenda. And so uh, Dr. Vreeland and his family, um, including his son, 16-year-old son, Elliot, uh, basically find themselves on the run uh, from the federal government uh, as they attempt to, uh, to get out of the country before an arrest warrant can put them in a secret FEMA prison. And now under NDAA, uh, Eric Holder, the master kingpin of so many public criminal operations, says that Homeland Security is not for radical Islam, but it is for the Tea Party, gun owners, libertarians, conservatives. Why do you think we're seeing this shift publicly? It, it, it's so surreal, I can't even believe it, but publicly onto anybody that likes George Washington as a terrorist. Um. Well, for the same reason why uh, the, the original tyrant of this continent, King George III, uh, was not particularly fond of the Continental Congress. Uh, if you stand up for, uh, for your rights, uh, then you are not their pawns anymore and, uh, and you're a problem. Wow. I want to talk more about the film, but afterwards, I want to get your view just on the world today. Again, we have Neil Shulman alongside NightMovie.com. But first off, tell folks where and when it's opening, how we can make sure uh, that it's a big hit at first, because for the folks that don't know, if the first cities where it's shown sell out uh, for even a few days in a row, it will then get booked at other theaters, causing a chain reaction. Well, Alex, it is possible for anybody, including Alex Jones, to go to the tug.com, and I'll, I'll use the radio code to spell that, that's Tango Uniform Golf Golf, uh, tug.com, and book a screening of Alongside Night anywhere in the United States. There are thousands of theaters which are already signed up under the tug.com system, ready to put, uh, put this movie out there. And so um, if you don't find a screening already in your own city, you book one, but you do have to do a little bit of marketing because you have to hit a, a minimum of somewhere between uh, uh, 60 and 70 or so uh, tickets sold for the screening to be confirmed. However, if it's not confirmed, nobody gets charged, including the promoter. The promoter gets 5% of the ticket sales, and, uh, and it's essentially on-demand distribution uh, from the grassroots, which is an ideal situation for an independent film like Alongside Night, which, although it's being given a lot of attention, uh, Kevin Sorbo was just uh, on ABC's On the Red Carpet over the weekend. So we are breaking through to the uh, mass market entertainment media. But nonetheless, uh, Hollywood hasn't uh, given us a distribution deal yet. And this is an ideal way to organize grassroots distribution while we're waiting for a, a traditional run like Kevin Sorbo's previous film, um, God's Not Dead which in nine weeks did $61 million at the domestic box office. And then people say, well, why do I want to make, you know, the independent filmmakers $61 million? Because then they can make hit after hit promoting pro-freedom, pro-human messages, and we can literally overthrow Hollywood, the main globalist 
a propaganda arm. This is how you win wars. 90% of it is propaganda. And, and folks, propaganda is a neutral term. It has a negative connotation. But there's black propaganda, gray propaganda, and white propaganda. When we put out white propaganda. Families are good. Private property is good. Self-defense is good. It's a win-win-win. You feel good at night. You have a great society. You don't screw people over. Black propaganda is lying to people, destroying them, dumbing them down, making them dependent. MSNBC. Uh, being deceptive, manipulating, cheating people, making them think as groups, not individuals. Uh, gray propaganda is just basically taking care of yourself at other people's expenses. Your take on that. I think the age of the kleptocrat is coming to an end. I believe that the waxing of corruption right now will be the beginning of their undoing. Look at all the statistics. Uh, Alex, you know, you do a job as a uh, as an investigative journalist, which absolutely has to be done. I'm taking a slightly different approach. Um, I'm saying I think that the system is already beyond uh, the tipping point. And uh, I think that we are already into a rebirth of the 1776 scenario of directly defending our rights against the government. However, I am not advocating violence. I am not advocating combating the government. No, no, I agree. I agree. The, 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 the kleptocratic left wants us to have a civil war with the police and military. We need to just be info war with our dollars and our, and our words, befriend them, and when they still attack us, just try to step out of the way, as almost like judo. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Going back to Neil Shulman, very interesting fella, alongside nightmovie.com. And again, uh, I've heard about this group. I think it started in Austin a few years ago. It's become very popular, and it's really propelling a lot of independent films to huge success a lot of liberty-based films uh, where you go shine up that you do want to see at a theater in your area who's associated with it. Uh, and then if enough people do that, it comes and is shown there. And I think you've only got to usually get about a quarter of the theater filled and then that will pay to bring it to the theater. Very, very exciting. Neil, tell folks again how they can go to that website and sign up to see alongside nightmovie.com. And then if it doesn't show their money's refunded. Right. Well, first of all, it doesn't cost the promoter any money to begin with. Uh, you don't have to put up any of your own money. But very frankly, if you go to alongsidenightmovie.com, uh, right on our website, uh, we either have uh, you click through to find theaters or host a screening, and that'll put you right on the tug.com website, either to, uh, to buy a ticket for an existing screening or to host a screening of your own. Uh, listen, let me emphasize, Alongside Night is not a documentary like Dinesh D'Souza is putting out. Uh, no offense to Dinesh D'Souza, he is the opposite number of Michael Moore. But what Alongside Night movie is, is a near-future political thriller. And we're talking about a movie with a lot of drama, a lot of action, a lot of comedy, and great music, including a full symphony orchestra score recorded by the National Symphony Orchestra of Ukraine, and a theme song, which you might, might as well figure that is coming out of a James Bond movie, which I'm very proud to say was written and performed by my daughter, Soleil. Amazing. Well, uh, again, it's a key part of the info war that these independent films get promoted out there. Looking at the larger picture, I mean, I agree with you. We're going into the end game with these people because they're order out of chaos. They're more than happy to just wreck everything. And they've, the already done, they've, mm -hmm. they've already done it, Alex. In other words, we don't need to... We, we, look, when the long Night first came out in 1979, it was considered science fiction. It's not science fiction anymore because the conditions necessary for them to have uh, totally violated the rights of the American people and for us to realize that the Constitution, which was so carefully crafted uh, to, to, to limit power, has not done that. I, it, it's a tragedy that, uh, that what our founding fathers crafted together uh, and, and, uh, to, to balance off the powers of government so that the people would always be in charge. Over the centuries, it is, it is degraded to the point where that isn't true anymore. We have our rights, as stated eloquently in the Declaration of Independence, and we never give up those rights. It is not subject to the whim of the government. It is not subject to the whim of anybody. We stand up for those rights. We simply say, no, we will not be oppressed. We are Americans, and we remember, and we will never forget. We've got a couple minutes left before we go to break, and I look forward to getting you back on the nightly news soon to break down more of the film. Uh, but other points you'd like to address dealing with the film or just where our culture and society is going? Very, all right. Very frankly, we have already reached the tipping point where the, gov uh, where the government and the, uh, the powers that wish to oppress us have already taken on too much, uh, they, they, more than they can chew. 
okay? There is no point on the Laffer curve where taxation can support uh, the government debt. It can't even service the debt, okay? We are going to reach a point where um, uh, the, the dollar is no longer going to be uh, the reserve currency of other countries, and they're not going to eat our debt anymore. When that happens, there's not going to be any money for welfare anymore. You can talk about well, whether or not welfare is, is going to be used for, uh, for United States citizens or for foreigners. It doesn't matter when the checks bounce. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to focus on a post-political situation, a situation in where the solutions come from the economic sector, not the political sector, resilient markets, secure communication, uh, secure, secure transportation of goods and services in such a way that they can't stop our trade anymore. We build up secure markets. We build up our, 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 our secure communications in such a way that we exercise our freedom and simply refuse to knuckle down. You know what? Can you do five more minutes with us on the other side? Because I want sure. to talk about what you just said. It's so key. Everything the globalists do, the global collectivists who exempt themselves from their own collectivism, they live above it but skim off the top use collectivism to dumb us down and domesticate us. Everything they do is about making us dependent, making us not have our own systems. The, the great crime is to be Amish or to have a lemonade stand. The great crime is to have your own machine shop. That's where they send the, 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 the uh, zoners and, the, and the, bu the bureaucrats to shut you down. You're absolutely right. We must become independent. That's the key. We'll be back. Stay with us. I wanted to ask our guest who's on with us, Neil Showman, a best-selling author, researcher, alongside nightmovie.com that Ron Paul and Kevin Sorbo and others are in, that you can help make a success. I wanted to ask him, though, I mean, he, he hits on building our own economic systems, becoming self-sufficient as the collapse comes into view. Ron Paul's talked about blaming the globalists for the collapse so they don't blame what's left of real capitalism for crony capitalism when that goes down. I think that's key as well but also reaching out to people in the system so they understand the big picture, exposing the globalists as wanting to ride this collapse that they helped engineer, but also becoming somewhat self-sufficient or even thinking about being self-sufficient will then move us in the right direction. I totally agree with you because you can see the system, as I said before we went to break, they do everything they can to make us dependent and to make us basically be like domesticated jellyfish. Why do you think that is, Neil? I mean, I agree with you. Obviously, that's their weak point. They're worried about libertarians and patriots who understand what freedom's about, just like cancer worries about being cut out of the body by the scalpel, if, if it had a consciousness, and they're worried about self-sufficiency. So I think if you look at how they're arrayed to stop us, you see the answer to defeat them right there. Look, um, in Star Wars, what leads to the destruction of the Empire? It's their hubris. It's their belief that the Death Star uh, is actually more powerful uh, than the, the Rebel Alliance. Okay, We have the tradition of freedom. They are counting from centuries of public education, from control of the mass media, from, uh, from control of the culture. They think that they can make us forget who we are. They can't. We won't forget. We will never forget. Now, I also need to point out something else, Alex. You're always trying to unearth secrets. You're looking for the whistleblowers. You're trying to find out what the enemy is doing in secret. That's great work. But what they do out in the open, what they brag, are the, what they consider their triumphs is perfectly sufficient for us to recognize them for what they are. We don't need to look at the curtain to know that, the, uh, that there is no wizard there. Very profound. No, no, I agree with you. And so much of what is out in the open, because you're informed, is not out in the open to the public. Still, maybe 30% of the public in polls thinks hydrofluorosilicic acid is good for them. And then I say to them, well, then why are they forcibly putting it in? Why don't you just take it? Forced medication is against the law, federally at the state level and under the Geneva Convention, and they just laugh at me and just move on with their ignorance. So so I don't even so much cover what's secret. I do some of that. But what is public, but but hidden in plain view. That's exactly right. But we need to just remember who we are. We need to remember what our basic principles are. And if we act according to the principles that that we 
were founded on as a nation, as a country, not as a state, not even as a federation of states, because that's that's a political construction which is a temporary device to try to to try to restrain them. Sure, sure, sure. It's the culture of America, the ideals that were never truly realized that threaten the dragons of the New World Order. It's not that the state of America was ever that good or special. It's just compared to the other slag heaps, it was a little bit better. So prosperity had a better chance here and became the model of the world. But then the parasites flocked here like locusts to a cornfield because that's where prosperity had been created. Now we've entered into this decadent trough a bottom trough, hopefully. Hopefully it's the end of, of, of this deepening decadence. So I get what you're saying, but the construct of our republic is certainly better than the North American Union or the United Nations. Uh, so many libertarians are just ready to let it all collapse. My issue is we are collapsing into a greater form of evil government. What do you say to that? I say that that uh, has been an ongoing process for a long time, and that's why we need to focus. We we, we need to focus on solutions. Okay, we need we need to be solution oriented. Your solution or oriented in a lot of ways with a, a, a lot of your uh, uh, products that you talk about. Okay, we need to be solution oriented in terms of. Uh, power in terms of communication, in terms of transportation, we need to basic. Look, I, I, I've said it before as a joke, but it's, it's partially true. If the Declaration of Independence were written today, it would read like a 12-step program as we wean ourselves away from government. But the point is, we are reaching a crisis point where the system is going to collapse upon itself. We don't need to seek out a revolution. They are bringing on a revolution, and it's simply a, a matter of when the music I agree. stops. I agree. Who is going to have a chair left? Who is going to have a chair left? And I say it needs to be we liberty seekers are not eliminated by them. But they think the collapse is going to bring in their Valhallic, utopian, socialist, uh, technocratic construct. There's no way it's going to work. It's going to be an unbelievable, unmitigated disaster. Uh, I mean, do you think they have a method of their madness at the technocratic level? Um, it's again going back to Star Wars. The, the more they tighten their grip, the more the system will slip it through their fingers. Okay, the the balance to every controlled economy is a counter economy. We are the counter economy. We will build the economy so that it becomes the economy, and we do that by making our business resilient and immune to their attacks. What does your gut tell you, Neil? What does your gut tell you? How is this going to end? I think it's going to end in triumph because uh, we have history on our side. We have economics on our side. Their economics is based on a lie that you can create something out of nothing. Our economics is based on a truth that uh, that the people who produce things are are, are the 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 crucial le the, the crucial base to uh, to 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 our security and our freedom. They think that we will be fools, that we will accept them as our paternalistic nanny state. Uh, that's a bit of a contradiction, but I, I think it covers both ends of it. We're not going to. That's not uh, that's not the basic principles uh, that uh, that our freedom was founded on, that our prosperity was founded on. We simply need to remember who we are and say, no, you are not my master. Well, I agree with that statement, and we have to just respond to the mind control by pointing out what an unmitigated fraud it is. Uh, again, the movie is alongsidenightmovie.com. Folks can find out the tales there. Neil Shulman, thank you so much for the time. It has been a pleasure. And a pleasure having you. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty, we are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom.
Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America, high quality products, and promote the ideals of liberty.